Hi Lisa, um, thank you for asking me to comment on your photographs uh, that you took on our recent uh, South, Waikato, South Waikato Camera Club out into Rotorua. Um, I'm happy to do that for you. Now if any Camera Club members see this, um, this person here is Lisa, newly joined. And for those who have short term memory loss, uh, this person here is Darren and he was Darren for the whole day. Now, Lisa, one of the important things you need to learn in um, photography, one of the most important things, is your exposure. Um, if you want quality art photographs, uh, you need to know how to control it, and you need to know what to look for. So, lesson one. Now, this here is a picture of your histogram. Uh, that is a picture of the exposure of the photograph that you take. Um, you need to keep basically the whole of your curve between the left and the right hand side. If you have a situation where when you look at your exposure curve it goes off to the left, um, such as what's been marked here, that in indicates to you that um, anything taken in very darkish areas such as shadows, um, such as this dark wetsuit here, um, those sorts of things, um, back of a nightclub, anything like that you're going to get no detail, no texture and you won't be able to rescue it in processing afterwards. If you have on your histogram a curve that goes off to the right, um, that's called clipping your highlights. Um, this is the highlight area, it is the, the whites you get in your photo, the bright areas and what happens is um, if you clip your highlights you will lose the texture in clouds you would lose the texture you get say in feathers on a white duck um, you'd lose the texture you might get on a fine white wedding dress and again you can't recover it in processing um, once you've lost it you've lost it so what happens with a clipped highlight is you get a white that looks like this, just very very bland, um, no texture. Now on the back of uh, many digital SLRs uh, you get a blinking screen which indicates to you that you've got a, a, a clipping occurring and it could look a little bit like, like this. Um, the back of the screen blinks and this area here it's indicating that um, it's going to be clipped and there's going to be no detail. So a histogram, Lisa, is something you need to learn. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Once you get the hang of it, it is actually not that difficult. But it is absolutely critical if you want to make really good art photography. Now, Lisa, because um, you're a new member to the club, I um, don't want to overdo the technical bits. Um, so I'm going to focus primarily on two things that's lightness and darkness and um, cropping which may help you focus on the subject matter um, and I don't really want to do too much more than that so I'm just going to go down looking at your photographs that you've submitted for me to have a look at and um, get a little bit of a thinking about it um, and you've got quite a good selection here. That's all right. Oh, what a lovely bunch of criminals they look like. Okay, um, actually, I'm going to leave that top one. I'm going to go to the second one. Okay, here we have um, here we have a line of geese, and the first thing I can see is that the white in around these geese, Lisa, uh, will hi most likely have highlight clipping so you won't get any detail in there. Um, there's highlight clipping in around here so this is um, very distracting and of course in the sky so I'm going to show you a couple of techniques which we might minimize that and focus you on the story so if we open in camera raw and we'll quickly go through this now because this is presented to you as a YouTube clip you may 
go back and check it as many times as you like you don't have to um, sort of get it all in one go now um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop to try and focus the storyline um, we can't really see these guys here and they're quite whited out so I'm going to take it from about here down to here something like that this this may not quite tell the story but something along those lines um, you've got highlight clipping here as you can see which is this white in the feathers um, so in trying to recover some of that I'll bring your highlight down which is and I'll also bring the exposure down bring it down so it picks up a bit more detail but unfortunately this I haven't recovered anything in the white um, and that's my suggestion what you might look at relatively simple um, maybe even go a little bit darker and let's have a look at what that looks like so I don't know if you think that looks any better but there's a suggestion focus on the subject remove any distracting objects by cropping if you have to but if you can get your exposure right you'll get the details now let's have a look at this one now here you have um, a nice soft flowing little piece of water which you've captured quite nicely um, it's a bit messy around the around this little stream so let's take a look at what you've got um, I'm going to just open the file info here and um, you took this at one-fifth of a second so the first lesson you can learn from this is that one-fifth of a second with water that's moving like this was you will get a little bit of a silky effect so if we open this in camera raw and what we see is that we have a lot of um, the exposure down here in the dark end uh, we have it tapering off here so first of all I'm going to just go and do a little bit of cropping um, I'll stick to a 4x6 format or 2x3 I'm going to just crop in something like this come down a little bit so we've got a little bit of a story here, a few sticks I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit I might just increase the contrast a tad and we'll see what that looks like so I don't know what you think of that Lisa but there's there's my thoughts on that one now um, here we have some mushrooms so I'm going to have a look at that right my very first thing I spot here is this here looks soft along the front here and for a little close-up like this you really need that to be sharp um, I like the colors nice green fresh springy looking white mushrooms nice contrast this bit here is out of focus which is alright but this here along the front here should not be out of focus so first of all we'll let's open this and we'll go and do a quick crop um, and I think I'll stick to a 2x3 format go in here um, that's a little bit of a distraction there so I'll just take that out but I'll leave that stalk in it is after all a mushroom I'll lift lift this up because um, this bit here is a little bit of a distraction so I'll lift this up so you can now what you can see is those out of focus mushrooms here just move that a fraction get rid of that um, just bring this down a little bit this is the stuff here on the on the edge was a little bit blurry okay 
that's what we've got. Um, I might just see if I can sharpen that a tad, but bring it down just a little bit and done. So let's have a look at that and see what that looks like. I don't know what you think of that, Lisa, but actually I'm just going to have a look at this. Um, see where this point is? That's where what's in this square here, and it's a magnifying glass. And what I can see as I go up near the top around here is that this piece around here is in focus, but down the front here it's clearly out of focus, so that's an issue. And I'm looking up, oh, oh, come back down. See this um, degrading in the picture here, and I'm coming up, coming up, and suddenly there appears to be a line there and that is a different quality. Um, um, that's a bit of a worry, Lisa. Um, I would say probably that's a lens issue. Could even be the camera. Uh, in fact, it is the camera. Okay, there's the mushrooms. Um, let's move on. Now I'll go down to these redwoods, lovely redwoods. Uh, first thing I can see here is you've got highlight clipping up here. You can see this flaring around here. Um, and adjusting things um, in processing will not save this. So The other thing I see is that the trees are leaning away from me. Now, when you have a small camera and you are shooting down low, this is an effect you'll always get. So you've got to be quite careful how you do it. You can't get rid of it completely, but you can, if you're very careful and think about it, minimise it. So I'm going to just open this in Camera Raw. Um, I'll have a go at removing this flare. What I'm going to do is, you can see you've got highlight clipping here, up here. So I'm going to bring the highlights down a bit, to, but that hasn't really helped you. Um, once you've lost it, you tend to have lost it. You don't. I'm going to darken up the exposure a little bit. Um, just try and bring it back a fraction. Apply a little bit of warming to it, just like so. Now I'm going to crop it. Um, to try and minimize, see this one here looks like it's straight and these look like they're leaning so to improve the effect I'm going to remove the straight looking one and so I'm going to just run a plumb line or a straight line down. Um, I hope that tree grew in a vertical and that sets my cropping. Um, I want to come down here. I'm going to crop to a 9 by 6, 9 by 16, um, because I need to get rid of this stuff on the side. Come across like that. Um, probably can't go any more than that. Something like that. And open that and let's take a look and see what I got. I don't know what you think of that, Lisa, but it looks a little bit straighter and not having that other tree in it it's removed that distraction. So we go down to this next one. Um, here we have moving water obviously. So let's just go and have a look at the file info. And you've got that at uh, one fifth of a second at a 500 ISO my suggestion would actually be to um, take the ISO right down and have it at a much slower speed and that'll give you a bit more marking but I'm not entirely sure what you wanted to do with that so I'm going to just open it. Okay we've got an exposure down this end so I'm just going to move the exposure up a little bit, have a look. Um, I don't think cropping is even going to help me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I can help this do much with this one. Some things just don't work, Lisa. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, I've just lightened it. Now we'll come down to these birds on a wharf. Now, one of the things with shooting birds 
is your shutter speed. If you want to record a good picture of a bird, um, you need to be shooting at at least a thousandth of a second, preferably more. Uh, also you need to shoot lots of photos. So this bird here would have been flying, moving around, doing things, and if you rapidly fire off a number of shots, maybe it'll turn its head the right way, or do something that looks interesting. If you try and to anticipate it and you squeeze off a single shot, invariably you're going to fail. Um, just running my eye down here, there's no real point here that I want to look at, there's no real interest, um, and I would almost be certain there's no detail in this white that you've got highlight clipping. So, but we'll just see if cropping it a little bit might help it, so we'll open it. Actually I'll just check the file info to see what speed you did shoot it at, because that bird there looks relatively in focus, but um, let's take a look. Uh, one five hundredth of a second at an ISO of 80. I think you need to take your camera off auto. Auto is not being helpful. Um, needed to be, you could easily shoot that at 400 or an 800, and this could have been up 1500. So let's open that. Open it in camera raw. Um, where would I go? Um, see we've got an exposure down this end and you've got this little bit of hi highlight clipping showing up here. This little piece going off the end which is the white of these birds here. You don't need this part in the picture because the picture is the birds. So if we just crop say down to these guys um, if you can crop in camera uh, the more you can do in camera the better, the less work you do in Photoshop the more enjoyment you get. Um, we probably need to just expose the shadows here a little bit, bring it up and that's probably all you can do but it's not a strong picture but you can focus attention by cropping but try to do it in camera and I can see that it's slightly blurry um, it's not even at five hundredths of a second, it's not in focus properly, so I'm just going to have a quick look. Um, I don't really like what I'm seeing here, and I suspect that your lens is not helping you. This is just hasn't got... For a five hundredth of a second, I would expect the resolution on say like feet to be better than what it is. Okay, here we come down to Josie on her knees and immediately my eye falls in this area here and what I see is flat, uh, soft, not in focus area. I'm going to have a look at this. Okay, um, I will be bold and say your camera lens or your camera is a problem. Um, and if you want to be in good art photography, I think you might have to consider not having that. Let's have a look at Josie. See, you can see the um, the detail on the lens, but better. Uh, you can even see some of the hairs in Josie's head. But when you come down here, you get this very bland, flat. Um, um, I'd seriously think about this camera. Okay, the main picture to me appears to be Josie taking a picture of these mushrooms or toadstools and the main issue is you've got highlight clipping down here which is really distracting your eye is drawn to it so if we open up we'll see what we can do we won't recover it um, once you've yeah, you can see it on here on on the histogram so when you're taking um, art quality art photography you have to check this in the field while you're doing it have a look if it's wrong make a small adjustment and you will recover all of that in the field uh, at the situation we're in now I can't recover it for you 
I can lessen it slightly, but that's pretty much all I can do. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. Um, Josie's hair has got a steely blue black to it, so I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to it, give it a more n neutral black. Um, I want to focus, um, you've got all this area around here which isn't really part of what you want to look at. So I'm going to use a 2x3 cropping and I'm going to focus attention on what Josie's doing. I want to cut as much of this blown out shoulder off as I can. Um, something like that. I need to give about half a head space above her head so she's not too tight. So we've got a diagonal across here from her leg up through there and an angle that way. She's roughly one third in, one third down and we'll see what that looks like. I think that's an improvement. I hope you think that too. But use cropping to focus your um, storytelling. Now here we have uh, moving water and just, oh, that's not sharp, that's not sharp and this here doesn't look sharp so I'm picking that it's not a fast enough shutter speed um, this here is not sharp and this is not sharp so let's take a look at the let's take a look at the file file information uh, 1 400th of a second okay ISO 80 1 400th of a second would freeze these leaves they wouldn't be moving at a 400th of a second. You will still have issues with water because at this speed you probably need to be a thousandth or more to freeze it or you need to be down at the sort of fifth of a second if you want it to be nice and soft. So I'm suspicious if this is blurry either the camera hasn't focused properly or there's a lens issue but um, all I'm going to do is just give you an example of crop, I think. Um, my eye goes all around this, and really this piece here is probably where the story may have been. So I'm just going to crop that piece. Plain and simple. Done. Had that been nice and sharp, and had the exposure been right, that could have been... might have been interesting. May not have been. But let's go to the next one. OK, uh, that's blurry, that's blurry, that's blurry, uh, that's got highlight clipping, and that's blurry. So I'm going to just pass this one. Here we got here. Um, here we have a bunch of people who have just got, come through the washing machine. They seem pretty pleased. Um, let's take a look at what we've got. OK, this along the front of the boat is not in focus, it's blurry. Let's come along, coming up the boat. See the exposure, the um, sharpness is improving to the end. So this guy on the end, he's basically coming into focus. Oh, look at that, you've got a very happy Asian. Hi Mum, I've just been through the washing machine. Um, and a tour guide. And maybe the end of that branch is starting to get in focus but the rest is out of focus. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the file info. See what you got. A 3 20th of a second at an ISO of 80. Okay. Um, really, again, you should have been up in the thousandth of a second, and you could have easily shot it at eight hundredth of a second. So, about all I could suggest is, um, if I just open it in camera, and this is not going to save it, it's just lighten it a little bit, but it's going to even make this here worse, because the exposure, look, you can see it's all clipping here, it's going off the end, so it's going to make the exposure worse, but you need it to be a bit lighter so you can see this. And then to focus attention, because all of this stuff here is out of focus, I just might leave that branch in a little bit and just 
do something like that. See if that looks a little bit better. This is a sort of a, a happy snap, a holiday snap, and you can see here this is more readable at this end, and down this end it's really blurry. So let's take a look at these guys. Uh, two more people in a washing machine. Um, this here looks to be in focus here along this edge. Uh, he isn't in focus, he's not in focus. I won't um, do anything with that. Uh, the main subject's not in focus. There's a focus point here, so either the camera's got it wrong or something's not worked right. Now, here's John. And I'm glad you walked around this thing, because I said, look, don't take a tourist shot straight from the front. Walk around, have a look, see what you can get. Uh, we have a number of issues here, which you can expect. This here is... Um, Highlight clipping, overexposed, out in the car park there, down and around there. Um, and in here there's not quite enough detail. You need to have a little bit more detail. So let's just um, open this in camera raw and see what we can do. See if within a few seconds we can do something. So I'll have a go at um, cropping this and I think maybe a 1-1 might be a good one. Let's just do a one one. Something like that. So I've got emphasis on uh, this round area. The, this underexposure in here and overexposure out here is going to be a problem. Maybe um, we could... I wonder what that would be like. No. Or whether that... No. Let's just try that. There's no real signs to this, you do what makes it look good. Let's bring the exposure up a little bit. Um, I'm going to try and pull these shadows out. Pull up the shadows. Even if I pull the shadows hard across, because you can see you've got this, in this area up here, you've got this highlight clipping, and um, even if I pull the shadows right across, it doesn't really bring it up properly. So let's leave a little bit of character there. Um, I want less contrast, not more. So just bring that down a little bit. But these false colours here, that's a worry. Um, so what I might do is um, just have a go at sharpening it a little bit. How about if we just take the colour out of it completely and see what, what that does for us? There we have a black and white. That's made it less obvious. Uh, we have a little bit of detail. We have this flare light coming through here, so we'll just quickly um, clone that out. Um, something like there. And something like there. Done. I don't know what you think of that, Lisa, but there's a, a black and white. Um, I perhaps could fix that cloning, make it a bit better. But that looks that looks quite interesting. Let's go down to here, and here we have um, a kayaker. And straight away, my eye falls on this area down here. Um, it is out of focus. I can start to read some text in there. I can see these highlight areas here are f getting ready to flare out, so um, you've got highlight clipping in these tiny areas here, so your exposure's out by a margin. So let's just um, take a look, open it in camera raw. Um, pity he's not looking towards you or this way a little bit, but I'd want to focus my attention on him, and if you can zoom in and do it, you do that. Use a big zoom, zoom in, and I'd clip him here, sort of put him in the top third sort of thing coming across, um, see if that improves it. See we've got these areas up here, that's a bit of an issue. So maybe if I take the highlights down a little bit, but take the exposure up to lighten them up, you can see this here starting to go. 
and um, we'll leave it at that. Just crop it. You can actually start reading that. So, and this is actually a worry that there is going out, and this here is out. So, what's what have we got here? It's come along. Oh, look at that. See down here. There's a problem with the exposure, um, with the quality, and then when you get to the top half, it changes. Um, definitely, I'd be very suspicious about your lens. Now down here you have a bunch of criminals. Um, it must have been a hard night for these three because they're all using the fence for support. Only this fella's freestanding. Um, and it actually looks reasonably sharp. So let's take a look. File info. Um, 430th of a second. Um, you didn't need that speed for that. Um, this is where you've got to take things off automatic. Uh, this is actually taken on your iPhone 5S. So, um, interesting. Okay, let's take a look at it. Open and camera raw. What can we do with this? Um, it's actually quite an interesting um, sort of street photography. Uh, this bit here is just a little bit of a distraction. Mainly that, but hey... Let's not worry too much. Let's just do a bit of a crop. Bring that down. Um, we could probably get in there. No. Maybe change the format. Say something like there. Just to cut out that exposed area there. Um, give a bit of space above Darren's head. Got to have a little bit of a space there. Maybe, maybe this is a one by a one by one a square finish. Yeah, that might be better. A square finish. There we are. A square crop. There we are. You have a nice line running down here. A nice line running in here. Um, a bunch of crooks lined up. Um, your exposure's in the middle here, so we've got a bit of leeway, so we can bring it down a little bit, darken it up. Um, we can add just, it's in the shade, so we can just pump it up with a little bit of contrast. And um, then we could emphasize it slightly by adding a, um, a vignette. So let's put a bit of a vignette in, like that. Done. Have a look at that. What do you think of that? I hope you think that's an improvement. Um, so that's a good one to keep. You could even put that into um, compulsories at Camera Club. Now I'm going up to this first one I spotted, which was that uh, one where Darren saw the hut and screamed halt. Um, a nice picture. A very nice picture. Um, first thing is I'm glad you listened to me when I said get low because there was a whole line of pine trees here and I said if you go low you will crop the image directly and so I'm glad you listened to that. Um, this is obviously an exposure that you didn't pick so the camera got it right so let's just have a look what did uh, file info Okay, you got a four thousandth of a second here. You didn't need that. Um, this is another case of take it off automatic, so you've got some control. You're back on your iPhone 5S. Well, I'm going. I'm going to jump to a conclusion here. I suggest you keep your phone and get rid of your camera, because the phone is taking better photographs. Okay. Um, you've got a little bit of detail in the cloud nice texture, um, texture in here, you've got little highlights in there which show up the door and the window, just absolutely perfect. So I'm going to open it in camera raw, I'm going to do as little as possible here, this is a case of shoot well, do as little work as possible, oops that's no good, does that look good? 
maybe that looks good um, no I'll go to I'll go to a 4 by 6 format cropping take that out go for a nice expanse of open space okay so your exposure is smack in the middle that's you fluke that the camera did that for you I'm going to just darken up the edges just just darken it up a little bit um, adds a bit of drama um, I might just give it a little tiny bit of a sharpen and I'm going to put a vignette on it put a vignette on it done and there you have it that's it Lisa um, this is taken on your iPhone so if there are competitions for phone photos um, I would stick that in if you'd had an SLR with a wide angle you would have got a lot more lead in from the side here but it's a well taken photograph and definitely one I would be very happy to have um, thank you for letting me comment.